Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, January 5th, 2018, and I want to talk about the iron battery. First iron battery video of the new year, I have tried a iron chloride in the place of iron EDTA. Let's talk about how that's going to work. The way I have been constructing iron batteries for all you new viewers is I have taken an iron anode and put that against a iron cathode to make an all iron battery. The iron dissolves and liberates electrons. The iron salt in water picks up those electrons, goes from iron three to iron two. And we have some sort of separator. In this case, it's a nafion membrane uh, in between to allow charge balance. That chemistry does work. I have used a bunch of different salts on the catholite. The best performance for a long time was iron EDTA. That's chelated iron. It's not very expensive. It's quite safe. It is workable at neutral pH, which is great. But unfortunately, EDTA eats iron. So a little bit of oxygen gets into the system from the air, and that causes iron to oxidize, and the EDTA just latches onto that oxidized EDTA, uh, iron and pulls it off. So iron slowly dissolves into solution when EDTA is present. That's not ideal because as the iron dissolves, it degrades the battery. And you can actually see what I suspect is that uh, in the, you can see that irreversibility in the overall charge curve. The way this works is that we start off trying to charge the battery and we can't because the battery is full and so we see no change in the overall charge. When we allow the battery to discharge, we see a decrease in the overall charge as negative current comes out of the battery through our potentiostat. And unfortunately, when we try to charge it again at 0.9 volts, the increase in charge, the positive current, is not as big as the negative current during discharge. And so we don't get as much power stored as we released. And again, we could repeat this multiple times and we get more power out than in as the battery discharges itself. Now, eventually we'd hope to reach some kind of steady state where we're putting the same amount of, bat of, of energy into the battery as we were getting out of the battery. But instead, what we see is the battery just degrades, gives up and stops responding as much, if at all. That's not what we're hoping for. Essentially, the battery is depleted and we can't charge it up again. We want something reversible, and so I changed over to iron chloride. And here you can see that it started charged. It was able to discharge efficiently. But now, instead of degrading itself, we get a nice slope indicating I'm not charging as much as I'm discharging. But the whole thing is able to be repeatable and is slowly balancing out as the charging and discharging get closer to equal. Bottom line, I'm pretty excited about the iron chloride version of this cell. The only thing that changed in this case was the solution around the electrodes. I didn't change the any physical component of the battery, so this is definitely an EDTA issue. I'm abandoning EDTA, I'm going to try to balance pH with iron chloride and prevent the oxygen oxidation and or hydrogen production using some auxiliary electrolytes and or materials chemistry of the electrodes. And hopefully that will work. Wish me luck. Until next time, this has been Peter Allen in the Allen Lab.